the Zohar, the Kabbalah, the Holy Zohar from 2,000 years ago, it says there is a bond between three entities, God, the Torah, and the nation of Israel. Kutsha Berichu, Oraita, and Am Israel, Chadem. There are three entities that are actually one. God, the Torah, and the Jews. They are one. You cannot separate one out of the triangle here. You cannot separate one. You cannot take the Torah out of the equation. You cannot take God out. You cannot take the Jews out. Everyone does not have a perfect value without the other two. If a Jew doesn't have Torah, he's worthless. He has zero value. If the Torah doesn't have Jews to follow it, also have no value. <laughs> it's a book collecting dust. If God would not give the Torah to the world, no one would even know he exists. No one would know anything about him. What value will have in a world without the Torah? If the Jews wouldn't have God, would they be able to survive one second among 70 wolves that try to attack their one sheep? <laughs> God is their shield, is their oxygen, is their everything. So it's like a table, you have a round table that has three legs. One, two, and three, like a shape of a triangle. If you take one out of the legs of the table, the table right away falls out. You take Hashem out of the story, no, no, nothing has value anymore. You take the Torah out, nothing has value. You take the, the Jews out, same thing. Achuta meshulash lo bimerait natek. You know why? The Zohar say, this is the divine words. Israel kutsha berichu veoraita chadem. Israel God and the Torah is one. They cannot separate it. It's one piece. You know, if a king doesn't have a nation, does he want anything? One time I get a call. Rabbi, would you agree to meet the king of uh, some nation in Africa? I never heard about that name. Some nation. I said, who? the king of such and such. Why should I meet him? He wants to meet you. Why? He listens to your lecture and he converted to Judaism and he's now in Israel. <laughs> I started to ask around, who is this man? Said, ah, don't pay attention. He barely have 20 people. A king with 20 followers. He comes from some royal family in Africa. But throughout the generation, I guess they disappeared, you know. <laughs> when a king has one million people in his country, very, very nice. If he has 10 million, even better. If he has 100 million, even better. Everybody understand that the more citizens follow the kingdom of this man, the more precious his kingdom is, right? <laughs> If five people come to pray to you in a synagogue, five people, what kind of a ceremony is this? Nobody showed up. But if 5,000 people showed up, it's called Berov Am Hadrat Melech. The more of the nation gather together, the more beauty and special specialty it gives to the king. That's why Better to pray in a large minyan than in a small one. Why? The more people in a synagogue, the more honor God is getting. But that's only if it's a kosher synagogue. If you go to a small synagogue of 20, 30 people, and all of them avrechim, bnei Torah, talmidei chachamim, they learn in yeshivot, respect the prayers, nobody talks, no smartphones, everyone dress properly, nice divrei Torah. Or you have a very large synagogue 
full of clowns, full of heretics, full of mechalelei Shabbat, all kinds of Hashem Yerachem kind of people there, talking, politics, sport, noise, nobody can hear when they read in the Torah Bechlal from the noise. Well, a place like this, you should not pray there. Not only is not glory to Hashem, it's a spit in his face. The 500 or 1,000 people gathered into a synagogue, and instead of focusing on praying and listening to the reading of the, of the Torah, they are busy chatting with each other like they are in a market or on a beach. Needless to say, if the women come without modesty there and all kinds of people, Mechalelei Shabbat, some places even have a valet parking, believe it or not. Valet parking on Shabbat. You don't know sometimes if to laugh or to cry. You know, you have these moments that you don't know if now it's the time to cry or to laugh. First reaction, you want to laugh. Ma? Synagogue, they call themselves orthodox. Someone is parking the car. Ma? On Shabbat? <laughs> One was a bunch of clowns. Then you begin to think and you realize how deep is the Jewish nation have sunk. How deep we are. We're in such a hole that the people do not even understand what a tragedy, what a horrific crime against God they're performing, thinking that they are doing something positive. You see, if you have a mass murderer, a serial killer, and any minute does he think that what he does is positive? No. He knows that he's murdering people. He's not proud of it. He has the drive to murder for whatever reasons, and he does it. Usually it's all psychos, mental cases, abuse, young age, who knows what he, had, what he had to go through. Did you ever see a person who goes and shot people in the head and kill them thinking he's committing a good deed? Besides some Arab terrorists, I don't think normal people that decided to murder something, someone think that what they did is something to be proud of. If someone beating up a dog, torturing a dog, does he think that what he does is a positive thing? Usually not. He knows that what he does is wrong. Most of the crimes that people do, they understand that it's a negative thing what they are doing. To come to a synagogue with a car thinking I'm doing such a great mitzvah, I'm coming to the synagogue instead of going to the beach, I drive to the shul to listen to the prayers and to meet friends. What can be wrong with that? What can be wrong? You create fire on Shabbat when you start the car. And it's written, Lo tevaru esh b'chol moshvotechem b'yom ha-Shabbat. Where is it written? In 12 places in the Torah. We just read about it on Shabbat in Parashat Vayakel. The previous Shabbat, Parashat Kitisa, Mechalel Shabbat Mot Yumat. And in other ten more places in the Torah. This is how blinded people can be. This is how blinded they can be. That not only that they forgot already that what they are doing is a horrible crime against God, at one point, they started to be proud of what they are doing. It's great. Better that we don't come to shul? Of course better. You do it, do it right. You want to commit a crime against God, and that's what brings you to his house? Come on. 